Whenever we buy an egg from the supermarket, we all want one thing. To graph it on the XY plane. But in order to achieve our goals of excellence, we have to start off basic with the geometric shape that resembles an egg the most. A circle. Fun fact, a circle is defined as a set of all points equidistant from a given location in Euclidean geometry. Meaning that in a way, the circle is a shape with infinite points, or just zero, if you like that better. To graph a circle on the xy plane, all we need to do is use Pythagoras theorem to derive x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius. We have a perfectly well-rounded circle now, and this does look somewhat like an egg. But I think only a seriously ill chicken could lay a circle. We need something better. But before we get into that, we need to understand something. The equation of a circle is implicit, meaning it's not displayed in clear values of x and y. Secondly, the equation is also not a function, as it fails the vertical line test. We could rearrange the terms into a function, though it would only give us a semicircle. And even though it is nice to have a clear relationship between x and y, all we want is to create an egg, so we'll ignore the fact that it isn't explicit. Just know that right now, this isn't an egg function, but rather an egg equation. An egg equation. Anyways, if you look at an egg, it's actually taller than it is long, meaning that we need to stretch the circle in order to match the egg. We need the equation for a stretched circle, or an ellipse, which can be created by adding two extra constants, a and b, which control x and y respectively. We can divide x squared by a squared and y squared by b squared to get the wonderful equation of an ellipse. a and b scale x and y multiplicatively, meaning that when a is multiplied by 2, x is twice as long. This looks similar to an egg, but Mother Nature created these future chickens that have a strange shape. One side of the egg is actually more lopsided than the other, meaning we have to change our equation accordingly. In order to make a side of the ellipse lopsided, we need to create a factor that scales based on x value. This makes it so that a side with a lower x value is more concentrated than the side with a higher x. We can accomplish this by adding x to both the denominator and the numerator and multiplying it by w, our weighting variable that controls how lopsided it is. Then we can add w squared at the end of both in order to fix it back in its center at the origin. The new shape we are left with is called an oval, also nicknamed fittingly, the egg curve. We can see how much this really resembles an egg now, and most of you say that this is all you really need. We could use some integrals and create a solid of revolution called an ovoid that is basically identical to an egg. You can stop here, most people do, and this is basically all you need for a simplistic graph representing an egg. But what if the chicken laid this? So not every egg is laid by a chicken, and different eggs can have different shapes. We have hen eggs, quail eggs, duck eggs, turkey eggs, goose eggs, ostrich eggs, this random blue thing on Facebook. Point is, not every egg can be reached with this oval equation. So we need an extra variable that controls how pear-shaped the eggs are. Let us define this variable as D and it controls the pairness of the egg. This new type of shape is called a piriform egg and can theoretically match the shape of every conceivable egg that exists. This sounds wonderful, doesn't it? An egg equation capable of matching every shape? And all we have to do is multiply this oval equation with a function called gx. Good news, it's just one multiplication. Bad news? Oftentimes when it's defined by a function, the function is very long. And in this case, the function is ridiculously long. And it's far beyond the scope of this video to actually understand how it works. Luckily for us, we don't need to. Just let this all sink in. It's honestly quite amazing when you think about it. An egg. 
something that recurs in nature, something that you've likely eaten for breakfast, something that can theoretically take on infinite shapes, can be described by just four variables, breadth, length, shift of vertical axis, and pear shapeness. If you want to know concretely what each variable represents, there does exist this cool little graph featuring all four, the length, the breadth, weighting, and pear shapeness represented by D, which actually just stands for the diameter at one quarter of the egg length, because it's like literally the diameter at one quarter of the egg length. Unlike other fields like calculus, linear algebra, trigonometry, this wasn't discovered centuries back. In fact, it was only discovered three years ago. But I think that this egg serves as a reminder that just like how the egg is constantly changing in the frying pan, mathematics is constantly changing with the passing of time. But what do I know, I just wanted to graph an egg.